ChatGPT5 is everywhere. Is it a game changer or is it just hype? Now, if you're an entrepreneur, some of these features are gonna waste your time and your money unless you use a feature that actually most people are missing. In this video, I'm gonna break down the seven things that you actually need to know what is truly valuable, what is just complete noise, and what are the things and features that make you more productive so you can make more money and save your precious time. And if you wanna use ChatGPT5 in N8N to build AI agents, make sure you watch to the end of the video because I've got some crucial information that's gonna save you a lot of time. So first of all, number one is one model or modes. Very quickly, what does that mean? With GPT-4, we had to say, hey, I wanna use the big brain thing, or I wanted to use the quick or the nano. GPT-5 auto selects based on your question. Number two, the second thing you need to know is that it is faster. They say somewhere between 30 to 50%. In other words, when you're speaking to it, it'll get you the answers you need quicker, so just using it as a model, if you already use GPT-4, will be more beneficial for you to become more productive and use it. Now, number three is an interesting one here, which is dashboards encoding. Now, there's been lots of examples, I'll show you on the screen, of people using this to create Tetris and Pokemon chess. That's very good. The angle that I take on this channel is all about how you can basically use AI to generate profit as an entrepreneur. So what we're gonna really be looking at here is how can it help us make better decisions? And this is one of the features that a lot of GPT-5 is overhyped. This I think is really freaking cool. So for example, we can give ChatGPT a prompt like this. I'd like you to create for me an interactive dashboard that shows 12 months from January to December. And I'd like you to track, for example, total, monthly recurring revenue. And I'd like to be able to input and change a couple of numbers. One should be churn rate and one should be number of new paying subscribers every month, make it visually beautiful and use a pop-ins font. Thank you. Bam, so that goes in. We've given that prompt to ChatGPT5. Now, one of the cool use cases with this, guys, is the fact that you can create these interactive uh, dashboards to help you make better business decisions. Now, we know that this is kind of similar to, you know, what you might describe in Bolt.new or Lovable, where you can build these beautiful applications and apps that can connect to things like NA10 and do great things. Other example, of course, is Lovable. Now, where ChatGPT5 is different is that these when you publish it, they handle the whole thing like publishing it on something called Netlify, uh, which means that it has its own website and they do all the plugging and the wiring in the back end. With ChatGPT, you can still create the code. It's just that you then need to go and do all that plumbing and wiring yourself. So you'd have to take additional steps, which means that ChatGPT5 is best in this case to be used for tools and modeling to kind of ask it questions and create things without burning a billion credits in these other platforms. Okay, cool, so this one's great. Let's just run the code and see what it looks like. Then it loads us in the background. This is directly quite interesting that ChatGPT5 has gone into. All right, cool, so is it cool? I wonder if I can just um, move this down. Okay, great, let's have a look. So it's given us some interesting data and then if we start moving things like our churn rate, do we see the numbers change? You can see them change, there you go. Cool, so you can use this then to say, okay, well, what if X, Y, Z? It's also great for creating tables, which is pretty decent, but again, it's nothing really new. It's just kind of a little bit better, which is kind of a general theme for ChatGPT. Now, number four that is quite interesting, which allegedly is the creativity bump. It's supposed to be more creative. There's one, I just wanna pull up this example here. This one shared that they asked it to create the most viral thread ever, and it did it. And this was the thread and it did quite well. Um, what it can do is I've noticed when it comes to creating like titles for YouTube, it's a lot better. So for example, let's test this, right? So I shared over to my school community, I'm gonna shoot over to the homepage, right? So I shared something in this group, which was a thousand viral hooks. If I open this up real quick, you can see on this, it's basically a thousand viral hooks, right? That have proven to have been validated. For example, best ways to save money. And then it's got examples. Uh, so we come down, if I just download this, for instance, I come back over to ChatGPT, upload a document. I say something like, hey, I'm doing a video on ChatGPT 5. I want to talk about, you know, a no a warts and all. Is it great? Is it not great? Explain what it's about. I'd like to review that document and give me five hook suggestions and then uh, three script suggestions based on this content, please. Bam, we put this one out. This is a very tried and tested little dirty method to see how creative ChatGPT5 actually is. So we've got some examples there. Hey, what I'd like to do as well is with your hook suggestions, show me the hook that you use as a reference point and which one you chose and why. So we can see how it's actually arrived at decisions, right? This one here, if you're expecting ChatGPT5 to change everything, watch this first. If you want to change insert dream result, blah, blah, blah. Very cool. And then it's given us some different things. So we're here open every time GPT drops into explodes, blah, blah, blah. So it's cool. It can do things. Fundamentally though, this is not going to change your world. If you're still using Claude, 
you may wish to continue to do so. People are finding interesting things. Personally, guys, when I use these models, I do one of two things. I split them. I use, I pretty much always ask the same thing to Claude and also ChatGPT. So from a usage perspective, is this a new paradigm shift in AI that's gonna blow your mind? And oh my gosh, we've gotta start using ChatGPT5. No, but you may as well use it because it's incrementally better, but it isn't performing better in every single benchmark, but you may as well use it. Number five, we have AI agents. And for AI agents, we're gonna use NA10, which is our no code platform builder, but lets us connect anything to anything. So we're gonna set everything off on a message, which is when it receives a message. Of course, this could be chatbot, could be anything you'd like. Uh, let's add in, I'm gonna show you how you connect, by the way, chat GPT to NA10, and when you should and shouldn't do that, right? So I come down here and I just go for the AI agent module. Now, the best way to get access to all of the GPT-5 modules, uh, in my experience, is come down to chat model. And actually, just to go down for Open Router. Open Router, if you're not familiar, is kind of like Willy Wonka's Emporium of um, software. So if you go over to Open Router right now, I'll just show you that real quick. You can kind of use anything. What is also really cool is you can use uh, AI models that are completely free as well. So you can come over to Open Router, create an account, come over here, go over to Keys, and just simply create a brand new key. So I could say here, this is test, test, whatever it is. I can set a, claim, a credit limit, I'll put five bucks on it, which is cool then I can just copy it. Again, you can use the free ones without having to do this, but it's just there for you. So if I then come over to our NA10 scenario, what I do is create a new credential, come down, throw the API key in, click save. Great, so this is now connected. Then what we need to do is basically choose the model. So if I click on open to here, what you'll notice is um, under here, you've got everything. If you just type, can you see, and some of these are like completely free as well. If you type in GPT-5, you can see the different ones that you've got there, right? So I could click on GPT-5 chat. Like so. And then we can ask it a question and we'll give it memory, which basically just helps it remember the stuff we're talking to about. So if I come down and open chat and I just say, yo, yo, it works. It can say some stuff. What's good with you today? Now, one benefit of GPT-5 in the conversations is the fact that, you know, sometimes when you ask a model something, it's like, sorry, I can't help with that. Allegedly, uh, with GPT-5, what it can do is it goes a little bit further to explaining why you can't. So it's a tiny micro benefit. I think you could sort of get there with a prompt, but it's nice it's built in. So for example, if I said, hey, uh, I'm doing a community bonfire meetup, I'd like you to run through all of the, I don't know, combustion processes and how to start large fires. You know, something crazy like that. Um, it should kind of like not tell me that and it should give us a good explanation. So I can just show you what that looks like down here in the output. There you can see, I can help with that, but for educational purposes, but I can't give step-by-step -step dangerous how-to instructions, blah, 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 and then goes into a little bit more detail. But crucially, should you be using um, GPT-5 in this, and how much is it actually going to cost you? So if I just show you this thing I pulled together here, right? This is the summary table of ChatGPT and its costs. So let's take a look at this, right? This is also when you'd use each of the things. So chat is good for natural conversation instruction, uh, GPT-4 mini is good reasoning, and speed at low cost, and then the nano is simple tax, tasks with max, max throughput, right? So this is 40 cents per million output tokens. Very simply, high cost and slower, no cost advantage, slight less nuances, low reasoning depth. But actually, from a performance perspective, guys, a lot of people are finding for, like the previous model just kind of a bit better. And also on Claude, what's interesting here is you can just see it, it is slightly more expensive, but if you look at the leaderboards of what people are actually using right now, they're still realistically using like the Claude data set. So is it actually better? Some people are finding older models performing better. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna get a performance it's an uptick and people are a little bit disappointed with that based on all of the um, feedback I've seen across thousands of different conversations with them. So. This is when you should use it. So I actually don't recommend that you change over because it's significantly more expensive and it's not gonna really justify the cost in your scenarios. So basically don't necessarily move everything over to ChatGPT5. Cool, then we got number six, which is context, which is an important call out here. If you're using it in ChatGPT, has a context window, I believe, of 400,000 tokens. Gemini is somewhere near the industry standard, which is a million. What's relevant for your perspective, if you're gonna be using this to ask it questions, right? Is that GPT-5, you know, 400,000 tokens is basically like the whole Lord of the Rings trilogy-ish. Whereas Gemini, it's something like, you know, the whole Harry Potter books plus another novel or so. So substantively, what does that mean? It means if you're talking to GPT-5, you can probably give it one very large data set and have an extended conversation. If you're talking to Gemini, you could do that with multiple. So 
Um, context length is very rarely gonna be the constraining factor for you when you're doing things. But if you're using it in a kind of automation context, we would use other tools like retrieval, augmented generation, or also RAG. Cool, and then finally, number seven is going to be Connector. So in the demo, they showed this idea that you could actually use ChatGPT um, to check your Gmail and your calendar. Now, this isn't live right now. This is supposed to be ro rolling out in a couple of weeks. That is something that can save you a lot of time. But these connective things are actually live in Claude.ai now. So you can use it for things like searching your drive, searching your Gmail, um, asking questions about PayPal, Canva, that kind of thing. I'll put a link down below for that. But now we've covered that, guys. If you want to take AI and automations to a new level and learn how to turn these things into profit, I'd recommend check out the link down below for the school community. We've got full guides that will take you from uh, a zero, not know how to spell AI, all the way up to um, actually what we call AI native entrepreneur and losing things. We've got step-by-step -step guidance on how to do that and how you can leverage AI in these automation systems to be profitable. In the meantime, check out this video on screen and I'll catch you inside the next one.